What's going on with Kylian Mbappé? Yesterday, Danny, it set the hair running. The news came out of Paris that Mbappé had reportedly told Paris Saint-Germain that he wants to leave the club and he even put a timescale on it in January. The striker believes promises made to him by the club's hierarchy last summer before signing a new deal have been broken. Mbappé says, I play differently here at the international level. He said, uh, when I play for France, they ask me for different things than what they ask me at my club. I have a lot more freedom here. It isn't like that uh, I'm asked to be a pivot as I am at PSG. Luis Campos, the sporting director, says Mbappé has never told me or Nasser al Khalafi that he wants to leave Paris Saint-Germain in January. Is Mbappé happy here? Well, you should ask him. It's a serious question. I see him working as a top professional. What do you, what's your take on it? Because we know, in fact, we really know that you love Mbappé. You even put him higher than Haaland. Mbappé. Talk about another superstar. Yeah. I'd pay money to watch that, lad. You'd pay money to watch Haaland, though, surely? No. Haaland's in a class of his own. <laughs> He's I mean, not in a class of his own. I'd have Mbappé ahead of Haaland. I agree with them. Um, I love Haaland, but I'd have Mbappé first. Mbappé's got this explosive dynamism, this individuality, this... Oh, it's just unbelievable. You remember saying that? Yeah. <laughs> now I do. <laughs> you do? Yes. I yeah. stand by it, actually, yeah, because when when you go and watch football, you want to go get get off the edge of your seat, get, you know, and, and be entertained. And I think Mbappé, with the skill set he's got, gives you more in terms of pleasure on the eye. Haaland's goals to games is a little bit better than Mbappé in his career. One point, I think he's a goal every 1.2 games. Mbappé's 1.4. You could argue where they've played and, you know, the levels. And so all that. who but, do you believe in this, Mbappé or Campos? Um... I think I've got to go with... I mean, I've not read a quote from the player and it's just a journalist saying things as fact that we don't know. You know what journalists are like, Jim. You've been one for years. It's They make up stuff. I've just read your quote from Mbappé. I'm not exactly. happy. That's not Mbappé's quote. It, the, he, I quote, I'm quoting him directly. He no, says, he at it. international level, he's asked to do uh, performing a totally oh, different that, role. Yeah, no, yeah. the other bit you read was from Julian Laron, wasn't it? Where he's talking about... There's, there's some more... I read it this morning. There's some more about where they're talking about um, he's not happy they haven't signed A, B and C. Yeah. They, you know, that that's not him saying that, though, is it? In terms of him talking on international duty about playing a certain position and the difference between playing it, f- what position he's playing for national team and club side. Certainly, I he, didn't, was, I didn't he was see... given more power, though, in his last contract, Mbappe. That he could speak it's his sound, mind more what, and say what, what he wants to play. Reading between the lines, it seems like he was assured on... Various things, but I, it sounds like his main problem at the moment is he doesn't really want to play down the middle and he wants to play on the right. Now, any top footballer has a right to have a preference on where they want to play and verbalise that. But if you've got the sporting director coming out and saying, he has not spoken to us about wanting to leave. Every day I see him working, he's working really hard and he's part of the group. I don't know what more you can take mm. from that, really. Well, there's a narrative up being built underneath. Also, Lewis Campos is allegedly not very happy there. Um, and he's the one that probably has the axe to grind because he's been brought in to do a certain job because he's got a backdrop of being a, a talent recruiter of some repute. I mean, if we are to believe, and it does beg a belief, mm. that there is an idea that the, the player would, would determine who the sporting director of the club is and stuff of that nature, then we are in we are disappearing into the territory of the lunatics running the asylum. I agree. The idea that he'd signed a, a contract until 25, so the, uh, the issue had been buried, seems to have been uncovered as not quite the case, that the uh, co- contract gives an option to him at the end of 24 to extend his contract by a year, not to the club. I find it slightly perplexing because if you look at the power base of this club, Nasser al Khalafi is not a person without influence that doesn't understand the football world and doesn't have huge financial reach. So the cost implications of Kylian Mbappé probably fall out of his pocket on the way to a game. <coughs> and allowing a player <laughs> to have that sort of outlook and attitude. We are in You've a terri- changed your tune about Al-Khalafi. You were having a pop at him last week. Well, I have a pop about the, the dynamics of what, what... How have I changed the tune? We're talking about a specific subject. Do I think that PSG and the influence of that kind of Middle Eastern money is the great thing for football? No, I don't. But that's not the subject we're talking about. We're talking about how you control a player like Kylian Mbappé and how this player seems to be getting ahead of himself and how the story seems to be that he's, in, he's fallen out with Neymar, he's fallen out with a football club, he doesn't want to play in a certain way, he's happy playing for France, he wasn't happy playing for France the other day because he didn't want to be part of a team photograph. Right? Because of different reasons so you can build the narrative around this player what we are talking about is a sublime talent mm. what we won't be talking about is him signing for an English Premier League club because I don't think an English Premier League club will pay 200 million to release him I just don't think it will happen 
Um, and I think that he will probably end up going back to Spain and then we'll have the ridiculous argument from that nitwit in Spain, Tevez, about how people are breaking football and the cost implications of it all are being determined by other people whilst his club spend the most money. But we're all agreed. We, we were jaw-dropped when uh, Aston Villa um, got involved with City and Jack Grealish went for £100 million. So these yes. things happen in football. Yep. Who's to say something similar on a bigger scale can't happen in regards to Mbappe? But I think I think ultimately it's very difficult. I think there's a few, only a few spaces it could land and it won't be Liverpool despite Jurgen Klopp's admiration for the plan. So where can he land? He can land Man, Man City. If Man City make a £200 million purchase, there will, be, there will be people all over them for financial fair play properly this time not on the basis that they can tie you up in court for 40 years, not on the basis of time exclusions. You will yeah. not be able to make, any more than PSG, seemingly have got away with it, a £200 million football transfer work. It, we always used to say, Danny, no player is bigger than the club. But with this with this kid, we're beginning to wonder. Well, he's, big, I, he's bigger than PSG. I, I Let's always... Be clear. He's I, bigger than PSG. Well, in terms of repute, in terms of achievement, PSG are a minnow. They win their league every year. They're not competing in Europe. They get to the final is the best attempt, and that's great. Fine, you can say Tottenham do the same. But for a club that's got a nation state powerhouse behind it, they're minnows. There's you still think that the Harlem Globetrotters of football, don't you? I, I I think there's lots of things about PSG that are not particularly to my liking. Mm. Um, <clears throat> but notwithstanding that, you know, I don't think they are anywhere near where the investment and the amount of energy and time has been spent on producing players of such significant repute joining that football club. Where's the where's the roll call of honour? But you've well, always said league. no player should be bigger than the club, and I, yet you're giving Mbappe a bit I'm of not, a pass I'm here. Not, I'm saying that the achievements of a PSG will not necessarily meet the expectations of a player. Not that I think his expectations should be the prevalent de determinating force here, but the bottom line is this is arguably one of the best players in the world who isn't playing for arguably one of the best clubs in the world. The, the, the thing is with me in terms of going back to, from a footballing perspective of his attitude, application and demands and all these things that are written about him, I watch him play and I never see anything other than a fully committed player for the team. That's good of him. No, I know. But, you should but, hope so, Danny. No, I mean, it, I know he it's earns a pre, more it than some countries' should, national it, debt. Yeah, it should be a prerequisite, I know. But when you're talking about big egos and people thinking, you know, talking about him in a way where he thinks, I am, I'm the man and I'll get what I want, I don't see that in his play. I don't see even this, even though he doesn't get on great with Neymar, some of their link up in some of the games I've seen this season has been phenomenal. Mm. So, Does he not need to knuckle down and get on with it? But he does work hard. But get on with it. Just get on with it. Well, I'm at the, PSG the, and I'm going to continue the to score only thing goals I'm hearing is that The only thing I've heard him say is that talking about his difference in positions for national team and club team. But I don't think you should find it safe into the press. I don't think you should be using social media to talk about those sort of things. But then again... I mean, no, I just mean, in it, a... Lewis Campos no, went the length of used, to Canal used, Plus yesterday. He used his social media. He was the one that put up yeah, yeah. the strap line, pivot. <clears throat> So he's the one, and I'm in a pivot gang or whatever he said. So no. he's the one, not a journalist yeah. being clever and eliciting a comment from him, and yeah, then we all go, oh, right, well, you know, stupid for saying it. This was him volunteering the idea that he's unhappy. And there is a school of thought which says that perhaps, perhaps within reason, you have your conversations with the people that you play for, I people you work that. for, you don't drag it into public domain. I agree with but that, the bigger yeah. issue is that everyone now knows that his contract expires in 2024, so the clock is now ticking. You're in the last season where you can control the destiny of a certain amount of transfer fee. Otherwise, you're going to be sort of a hostage to fortune about yeah. what you can get for a player that's contract is running down. And his agent's running, rubbing his hands because he knows now, yep, that helps the auction when yeah. it comes along. Yeah, exactly right. I'd love to see him in the Prem, honestly. <coughs> oh, well, just as long as whoever's got him plays him in the right position. It's quarter to <laughs> 11. Jim White and Simon Jordan. Monday to Friday mornings from 10 on AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.